and said, listen, just because we were good the last two years doesn't mean we don't have to prove it this year. Do you still feel like this team has to prove something again this year, despite what you did the last two years? <clears throat> yeah, I think, uh, you know, if you come into the NFL season with any other mindset, then, you know, we're starting from scratch. We're at the bottom of the hill, and uh, then you're going to be in for a long year. Um, so, yeah, we feel that way. Our guys still have that chip on their shoulder, and um, you know we'll remind them of that too. It's just that's just the way it is. Every team is good. Every you know now that we've had the success we've had, we're not nobody's sleeping on us. So you know we've got to be ready to go each uh, week in and week out. Is it hard when you've gotten that close two times in a row, knowing that you have to? push the rock back up the mountain again, start all over. Is that a hard mindset to do? I, I just think it gives you more incentive to get back. You know what it t tastes like, so you want to get back there. So to me, I think it gives you even, makes it a little bit easier in my mind. Uh, this team has found a way the last two years to, you talked about finding a way to, to motivate these guys. They have, they got to play us or why not us? It's been this underdog thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody looks at the Bengals as underdogs anymore. Do you have to recalibrate? Um, the way this team looks at itself, or do you have to find ways to manufacture motivation within the team? I just think that it, com it comes from the locker room. I think we got great guys in there, and, and they've kind of evolved now, I, I believe, in, into what you we're talking about. And that, hey, you know, we're going to show up on Sundays. We're going to be confident. Uh, we're not going to be uh, put ourselves in a situation where we're not going to take anyone lightly. But we're going to go out there, be confident, and feel like we can win every game we we play. And I think that's the mindset you have to have. Lou, with the loss of Bell and Bates, um, how important is the health and the contribution of Chidobe being what he's been all along with all the young guys in your secondary? How important is he this year? Yeah, you know, having uh, Chido around is going to be, it's always big, uh, not only in the, in the meeting room, in the locker room, but certainly now getting them back on the field. So. Uh, you know, we, we, but the good news is for us is, you know, Mike Hilton, the guy has been around forever, Mike Thomas, there's guys in that room have been there, know what to do, know how to do it, and they'll help also with these young guys. What is it about this coach? Because you got a lot of young guys, a couple last year, brought in three in this group, that makes you feel like you won't miss a beat if not even be better in the second group. You know, there's still a lot to be done, a lot of work to be done uh, there, uh, replacing those two guys. But you know, we've got talented, uh, talented group of people that uh, have a chance to step in and play. And um, you know, this preseason will be big for those guys. But we're looking forward to it. And you know, I feel confident. You know, that really, you know, we got a great group back, and these these guys that'll come in and do a good job. What needs to be better from your defense this year? Well, you know, I always, as I always say, you know, we want to make sure we're really, really good in scoring defense. Um, I think to me, you know, last time I checked, as long as we have one more point than the other team, we're doing well. So, um, you know, so we want to stay up in the tops there. Um, you know, and we our numbers were down some in the in the sack game, so we want to get that up a little bit. But um, you know, but continue to do well in the areas that are important. And that's keeping people off the scoreboard. Development of Joseph Osai, drafting Miles Murphy, Trey Henderson, Sam Hubbard. Do you feel like the sack numbers should go up this year? I believe so. You know, we're around the quarterback a bunch. You know, Trey's always around the quarterback, Sam and those guys. So just a matter of finishing a few more. You know, we, we finished. Um, you know, really high. I think first in the league in QBR percentage against. And as long as that number's good, the sacks will come. Making a quarterback do things he doesn't want to do. Um, you know, then then I believe that those other things will come along with just by finishing some. And uh, you know, we had a couple of penalties where there were sacks, callbacks. So it'll get better. I'm not worried about it. Do you ever hear what guys in the locker room say about you? <laughs> they use terms like bad scientist. Uh, it feels like guys really take to you as, as a coach hearing your players say those things. If you do, how important is that to you? I mean, to me, I just I know the relationship we have with each other in the locker room and, and the guys and how we talk. Uh, about different things, and so that's what's important to me. You know, I love that. You know, the stuff is funny and, and all, but uh, at the end of the day, they know that I've got their. We as a coaching staff have their best interest at heart, and we're trying to make them better players and a better unit so that we can go out there and win games. But it's important that we start every day with, you know, some kind of communication. Usually, I'm breaking somebody's chops, so it goes from there. Are you disappointed that you're here? You're not a head coach. Oh, not at all. No, this is a great place. Um, all that stuff can wait till after the season. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be back with this group of guys, this team. Uh, the city is great. Uh, we love living here. And so, no, not at all. I'm happy to be here.
Does it still does it drive you? Is is that is that the end goal for anybody in this game? Is is to, to get yourself to the position where Zach is? I mean, I would think, you know, everybody has their goals and things. And, you know, at some point, if it happens, great. If not, you know, like I said, I'm in a great place. I wouldn't want to be anybody, anywhere else. Have you experienced uh, having to replace both safeties, both starting safeties, anywhere else uh, during your career, whether it be collegiate or? Yeah, I mean, it happens. It happens during the season with injuries, you know, yeah. and where you're plugging guys into play and have, have to go out there and do different things. So um, it'll be no different than, than anything else. You know, these guys will work together well, and, and we'll, we'll get them running. Moving today's NFL, how hard is it to be a defensive coordinator facing some of those offenses and the way that offenses are constructed? Yeah, it certainly provides different challenges each week. There's no doubt about it. You know, the, the, the different formations and the different plays and motions and things that you get week in and week out, especially in our division. You know, we've got, you know, three teams that can do very different things. Um, and provide challenges each week to us, but you know that's why we do it. You know, it's it's uh, it's it is a challenge, as I mentioned, but you know we uh, that's what makes you want to wake up and come to work every day. Coach, I got one thing that's bothering me. You gotta help. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta tell me the best pizza you want to start that with. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'll get myself in trouble. There's too many great ones. Lou, how important has versatility become for deep? You know, it used to be guys were specialists. At, whether they were sack artists or they were great in coverage or whatever, but you've got a growing number of guys who can do multiple things. Yeah, I think that's huge, especially as we just talked about in today's game, you know, all the challenges that, uh, you know, whether it's covering a tight end or covering great running back or, or, you know, or defending against an athletic quarterback, whatever it may be, we've got certain guys that are going to do certain jobs, and, um, and, and that's helped us over the last few years. You always have something back pocket, I mean, not all at halftime, you'll be like, man, they look totally different than they did in the entire first half, you know, fourth quarter start. Man, they're doing something totally mm-hmm. different than they I just think that each game flows a little bit different, and then you know if something is uh, not working, maybe that we thought would, and, and we can grab something else out and talk to the players on the sideline and come up with the with, come up and talk to the other coaches as well. And if it's if it's working, great, don't screw it up. And if it's not, maybe tweak a few things here or there. But we're we're always managing things in, in the game and always looking to solve you know be problem solvers as the game goes along. How much does it help your DBs to work against some of the great receivers yeah. in the league on a daily basis? And how much do those guys share and help, especially the younger DBs? Yeah, I think it's I think it's huge. Uh, I also, th- you know, we have great guys. So, you know, the Jamars, the T's, the TB's of the world where they're willing to, hey, I saw you do this, why'd you do that? And same thing for us, you know, hey, I'm playing this leverage because I know I got safety, whatever it may be. So they're going back and forth all the time. Um, you know, and then they're, they're very competitive people. So, uh, you know, it's, a, it's something that we, we uh, they definitely help each other to answer your question. Good. Thank you.